Everything is in creation, clearly seen. General revelation. Uh, our next slide here, for they knew God. We see a lot of this knowing, knowing, knowing going on here. Multiple times, times Paul says over and over, they knew God and their thinking became futile because of the suppression of the truth. The knowledge of God is in every human being, yet sin causes us to suppress that truth. And the result of that is foolishness. People claim to be wise, but become fools. You know, Gary was talking before, I, you know, saying house of pot, house of whatever the long list of, when it's so obvious, what it says, it says house of David. What is that? Suppression of the truth and unrighteousness. The knowledge of God coming out and being suppressed. We see that going on there. So as we go into an encounter, we have to pray. Because we can't make a person change their mind. The Holy Spirit does that work. But the Holy Spirit does equip us to go into the encounter and have that conversation. We see that. House of pot. I think, how silly is that? Why can't it just be House of David? I interpret that theologically. The suppression of the truth in unrighteousness. And the results of that are the glorification of the created order or of man. Man becomes centered upon himself, which is what we see in secularism today. In the ancient world, it was usually a more form of pagan idolatry. Uh, but nonetheless, the result is the same. Something or someone uh, in the created order becomes the creator and becomes the ob object of worship. There's action that goes on in this. It's not just... Uh, well, you know, God doesn't, I'm not sure about God. It's not a neutral proposition. It's a suppression that results in serving something other than the Creator. And again, I emphasize, this is what we all once were as well. And only, only for the grace of Christ comes and rescues us from that condition. We always remember that going into the encounter. There's a service going on. There's an acceptance of authority as well in that service. A person accepts the authority of who or what he serves. Whatever he's serving becomes his authority. In modern world, secularism, man serves himself. Man is the ultimate end of authority. Man's reason is supreme. Well, there's a problem with that because man's reason doesn't function properly. We'll talk about it in a minute. So what goes on, there's an exchange that goes on. They exchange God for a lie exchanged God for a lie, and served and worshipped created things rather than the Creator. So, furthermore, it's a pretty serious indictment, and it's pretty stark and dark, uh, dark, but it is nonetheless what we face and what we must know about the situation in humanity. Uh, we didn't think that it was worthwhile to retain, let's see if I can get this to work right, can you see that? The knowledge of God, once again, okay? So we didn't think it was worth retaining what it is that makes us human. Part of our humanity is our knowledge of God, our relation as creatures to the Creator. We, we want to get rid of that. We want to we shove that down and get rid of it. And then also, uh, and this per pertains to moral belief. Although they knew God's righteous decree, that's, that's God's moral law. Know it, to know it. We know, everyone knows God's righteous decree. And that's another part of the knowledge that we have of God. We see this reflected in people. Uh, even though they, they claim that God doesn't exist, they have moral uh, laws and rules that they've written, right? That's wrong, that's right. This is wrong, that's right. That moral unction comes from being image of God and knowing God's righteous decree. So there's knowledge already. So when you go into a conversation with someone that doesn't know the Lord, they already know Him, even though they might not admit it. You have a point of contact. And this is very, very important. This must inform our uh, approach and what we know about man's condition and where we were once ourselves. Uh, another scripture verse that pertains to this is 1 Corinthians 2. Um, the man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, meaning one of these things is the Bible. The Bible comes from the Spirit of God, right? Holy Spirit moved men to write Scripture, the authoritative Word of God, 
For they are foolishness to him, he can't understand them because they are spiritually discerned. But we have the mind of Christ, not because we're better, but because God has delivered us from that condition. And now we can accept the word of God for what it says. So very, very important for us to understand this. And having the mind of Christ, now we have access as Christ is the treasures of all wisdom and knowledge are in Christ. True knowledge is in Christ. Restored knowledge, Ephesians 4.24. When you're, when you're saved, God restores knowledge unto Him, unto righteousness. Okay, last one. I'm not going to belabor the point. I think you guys got it. But I do think it's a very important apologetic fact. Man's condition if we want to talk in technical terms, anthropology, what's your study of man? What is man's condition? The world believes that man functions normally. The Bible says man does not function normally. He pretends that God exists when he actually possesses the knowledge of God. Possesses the knowledge of God, knows God's righteous decree, and suppresses the truth and unrighteousness. Okay, The sinful mind is hostile to God. So we can really see in, in some of these secular arguments against the Bible, this, the house of pot, it's the natural mind militating against the truth of God. Press, the, the truth is pressing in and, and, and one wants to resist that. That's what we see going on there. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go around to people that are not in the faith and just laying this on them. Okay, uh, Unlikely to be effective. Maybe in certain circumstances, somebody's at a, a point where you just need to tell them the flat-out, honest truth, okay? I'm not saying this should be your methodology. Your methodology in your encounter is different with every single person that you come across. But the reality behind that is this, with every human being in the world, everyone. So you know that going into it. You don't have to tell them that. You just have to know that. Because if you come out and do this, it's not going to be very effective. Hi, how are you this morning? You're going to hell. Uh, that's just not going to work. Um, that, that's not a very effective way to build a relationship. Uh, of course, we know that doctrine is a very difficult doctrine, uh, and we shouldn't deny it, of course. But nonetheless, that's not how we approach it. Okay? So this is what we know about the human condition. Human reason does not reason rightly. Let me give you some descriptions of the human condition, it's fallen, it's fallible, it's in error. It's self-aggrandizing. It's selfishly motivated. It's hostile to God. It doesn't attribute to God things that ought to be attributed to God. Um, even in acts of goodness, the glory of God is not embedded in that. So we have to be very aware of this. We can't accept the things of the Spirit. Nonetheless, God works in these encounters, when we encounter someone, the spirit works, even though this is the, the condition that somebody's in. So we go prepared, we go prayed up, we go ready, we equip ourselves, we watch Dr. Wood and Gary and Gordon on the video and get all our stuff together, but we have to understand the spirit has to be working and we have to have this knowledge going into the encounter. And then we adjust our tactics to each individual person that we encounter. And that may be simply a person who's broken and just needs to know that Jesus loves them. And another person that doesn't understand if God is good, why is there evil in the world? Or I read about Kathleen Kenyon in Jericho and I know the account's false. Could be a, one of a myriad of different reasons for unbelief. But if you understand what's going on behind that, it'll help you in your encounter. So I want to encourage you with that today.